Hi boys and girls, thanks for joining and watching the video lesson for Chapel Hill Kids Weekly Lesson. We really love it when you do. We also love getting the chance to remind you how much God loves you. He's your super fan. So have you guys been practicing your kindness skills? Sometimes people talk about kindness as if you're paying it forward, and that's what kindness is. When you are kind to others, most of the time, they're kind right back at you. You can do this. We sure can, uh, Miss Karen, but it has sure been a hard, uh, it's hard for us to always be kind and when when we're not being kind uh, we kind of feel it and we need to ask for forgiveness from others and that's kind of a hard thing to do as, as well truth is there will always be times when we don't choose to be kind mm -hmm. and today we'll explore something even more challenging being more kind than you have to be we'll need the holy spirit's help on this one but that just makes it more of an adventure so i can't wait to hear god's story today You'll hear it a little bit later in this video. Spoiler alert, it has something to do with kindness. So for now, let's get up. We're gonna do some dance moves. You guys ready to worship? We're gonna to decide to sing and worship to God. It's about kindness, our song. He gives us so much when we give it to others. So let's do this worship song together.
Hello, super fans. My name is Haley, and if you're like me, you love all kinds of sports, and you love cheering on your favorite people. And you do this because you really love kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. One thing I've learned as a super fan is that kindness isn't the same for everyone. You have to use different kinds of cheering for different kinds of people. For instance, you don't want to use your air horn at the golf tournament. Uh, I learned that one the hard way. You have to cheer one way for a baseball team. Yeah. Another way for tennis. And then soccer. <laughs> and even racing! <laughs> A lot of different ways to show kindness. So if you want to show someone they're valuable, you can cheer for them. Or like you'll see in today's story, you can give a little extra. I better get ready to cheer on the Bible story. Ah, yes. Good Bible story. Very well done. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 41. Jesus was rocking the world. Everywhere he traveled, he told about the good news of God's kingdom. He called people to turn away from the wrong things they had done, and he healed sick people. Great crowds began to follow Jesus. So one day, he went up on a mountainside and sat down to share with them how God wants us to live. Blessed are those who are humble, they will be given the earth. God created us. He knows that we were designed to find joy and be at peace when we follow His ways, when we see and treat others the way God does. So, right in the middle of what's often called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with them. Okay. What? <laughs> to our ears, this probably sounds like a word problem, or maybe like our PE teacher telling us to go run laps. But the people listening to Jesus knew exactly what he meant. They all lived under the rule of the Caesar in Rome. The Romans had conquered many, many territories. Judea had become a little backwater province of the Roman Empire, and Roman soldiers were sent to keep order. Jesus and all the people he taught lived under Roman rule, and they had to obey the law of Rome, including this one. I decree that any Roman soldier may force a Jew to carry his pack for precisely one mile. If you're thinking, what's the big deal? Think again. Being a Roman soldier was not for wimps. Sometimes the packs they carried weighed as much as 100 pounds. It took real grit and stamina to march for miles carrying that much gear. So it wasn't unusual for a soldier to call on some random person along the road to haul their pack for one mile or about a thousand steps. And if that person says no, well, it was considered an act of rebellion against the empire. Now, imagine you're an everyday, ordinary average Joe or Joseph. You're hiking along the road, maybe you're on your way to Jerusalem. When you look up and in the distance, you see a Roman soldier heading your way. I don't know about you, but I think I'd turn right around and head back the other way. Or get off the road and head into a grove of olive trees. Or maybe just avoid eye contact at all costs. But maybe none of that works. The soldier stops, calls you out, and you have no choice but to look up. The soldier orders you to take his heavy pack and haul it along for a whole mile. You can't fight the empire. 
So, you pick up the pack. And it's forward march. You're probably counting your steps the whole way. 58, 59, just waiting until you can drop that pack. 681, 682, holding out until you can get away from this soldier that sees you as scum. 998, 999, 1000. <gasps> That's it, you're free. Roman law says that that soldier can't make you go more than one mile. So you can toss that pack like it's hot and run on home. <laughs> Except, Jesus says something else. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. You had to carry that pack the first mile. You didn't have a choice. But now you get to choose. And if you choose to take that pack another mile, it says a lot. It says, I matter. I'm valuable just like you, and I can make my own choices. But it also says you matter. This is a really heavy load you have to carry. And I'm gonna help you not because I have to, but because I choose to. Go the extra mile doesn't just mean go big or go home. Going the extra mile means that you make a choice to help someone, to be kind. You choose an action that says, I'm doing this for you because I want to, not because I have to. And I'm doing this because you are made in the image of God. And that makes you valuable to him and to me. So, you may not live in an empire, but you can still go the extra mile. Jesus' disciple, Matthew, wrote down one of Jesus' most famous sermons, sometimes called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught so many things about kindness, like... Let your light shine so others can see it! Woo! Do not judge other people. Love your enemy! And Jesus also said this, suppose someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with them. That's where we get the phrase, go the extra mile. Huh. Nowadays, people probably aren't forcing you to go a mile, but the idea of what Jesus was saying still works. Going the extra mile means being kinder than you have to be. It means making your bed like you're told and cleaning the rest of your room, even if you aren't told. Sometimes it means doing something you know you should before you're told and with a good attitude, but you don't do it for the applause. You go the extra mile because when you follow Jesus, you should be pointing people to him. People can see how much Jesus loves them through the kindness that you show. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be kinder than you have to be. Show people kindness even when they may not earn it. Give them a little extra kindness they don't see coming. You can be their super fan. I did not see that coming. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Woo. Boys and girls, I hope you're choosing to show kindness because you want to and not because you have to. Let's learn together all week what it means to go the extra mile. Did you know that the term going the extra mile comes from Jesus? And uh, it, it, it sure is going this extra mile when we decide to be kind. When I was a boy uh, your age, I remember going the extra mile and it looked a little bit like this. My mom asked me to clean my room one rainy Saturday and I kind of grumbled and complained saying to my mom, do I have to? <laughs> and of course she said, yes. yes. You do. See, they said it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I decided to do the least amount of work uh, possible. I, I stuffed things under the bed, I shoved things into the drawers, and I stuffed my clothes in the clothes basket, and 
I don't even know if they're dirty or clean, but after I was done, I thought to myself, I look out the window, it's a rainy day, why don't I just do a better job? I ended up really organizing everything in my room. I even asked my mom to show me how to load the laundry, and she was so happy that day. For whatever reason, actually, she was really upset that day, and I'm not really sure why, but I, I remember this story because she was so upset for like a week before. And my mom was so happy, it just kind of made my day that I did something that made her happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so think about ways you can do something like that. You go the extra mile this week. You, you put on mercy and you put on kindness. And if you do, uh, you could just make the people around you happier, uh, like I did with my mom. So like I remember verse says, let's do it again together. You, you are, are God's, God's chosen people. people. You, you are, are holy and dearly loved. loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud, be gentle and patient. Colossians 3.12. See you next week. Bye.